Well, good afternoon and welcome back to the uh, first of our afternoon keynote sessions. Um, Dell have been a supporter of SNW Europe for many years and we're pleased to have them back again as a platinum sponsor with us this year. A lot of activity in the market with Dell over the past uh, 12 months since the last time we were here with acquisitions taking place and uh, a lot of exciting developments. I'm sure Robin, Robin Coopers, who's the Enterprise Marketing Director for Western Europe at Dell, is going to give you a, uh, a very informed and thorough overview of how Dell sees the market and uh, its moves in, in, the, in, the, in our sectors today around storage, networking, etc. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Robin. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. So let me get technology right. So good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for uh, choosing this session after the lunch. Uh, I do know that, you know, the first presentation after lunch is typically not the easiest one, uh, but I do suggest, you know, sit down, relax a little bit, and let me educate you a little bit what Dell is all about when, when it comes to storage, and in particular, if you look to this title, uh, the Dell Fluid Data Solutions. Um, my name is Robin Coopers, I said by Paul. I am leading the uh, marketing team in Western Europe for Enterprise. Enterprise within Dell is the definition uh, for server storage, networking, and the relevant services to those uh, solutions. Um, so, so that's my daily job. So as it is a marketing title, this presentation is somewhat marketing oriented. It's pretty high level, and there's a good reason for it. I didn't want to go for a technology deep dive. Uh, we can talk for hours about bits and bytes. I know that some of you might have a technical interest, but we'd rather have those discussions with you on the booth that we will have over here. The aim for this presentation here is to let you understand what Dell is after when it comes to storage, and, and especially what we're doing to help you, customers, partners, and everybody in the ecosystem to make life a little bit easier. And that brings me automatically to the next slide. Um, for those who don't know, typically Dell has been recognized as an IT vendor. Yeah, we do notebooks, we do PCs, we do server, we do storage. That's great. And to a certain extent, that is the core of our business. And while we have transitioned to a full solution IT company, um, there is more in life to help customers with than just the solutions and just the products. Uh, what we really try to do, you know, that's the DNA of, of Dell, is helping our customers to make life a little bit easier. So... What we do is we make what is complex very easy, or at least as easy as possible. Uh, we do recognize that although the industry has made great moves over the last couple of years, there are certainly areas in the technology space that are still being perceived and are actually are complex. They are difficult to deploy, they are difficult to, uh, to, to manage, and they are difficult to maintain. And even for maybe some of you, they are even too difficult to buy because you need to understand what the technology is all about and you know the technology goes at a very high space, uh, speed. So what we try to do is make it as easy as possible. Secondly, with the technology that is available, either through Dell's own development or through technology that's been offered to us by all kinds of partners, we really try to make the technology work harder for you. And harder means best performance, easier to manage, and, and everything that comes along with it. Um, I think Dell has a very good track record. We are always being very fast to market. We're bringing the latest and greatest technology to the market, and we will continue doing that one. And that gives a clear be business benefit for everybody that is using it. Uh, the best example is our launch that we started earlier this year with our 12th generation servers, which are state-of-the-art servers and are outpacing everybody in the market as we speak uh, due to the fact that we have walked the talk here and really committed to make uh, life easier for our customers and let that technology work harder than anybody else. So, th as I said, you know, there is a need for the technology to work better uh, for everybody. And for storage in particular, because that's the, uh, the focus of these presentations, uh, it needs to be done even more uh, with a higher priority than anything else. Uh, because everybody out here and out there has storage challenges. And let me focus on three to start with, because I think I can open a can of worms here with all kinds of discussions where you see challenges and where you see opportunities. But the three main ones that you constantly see coming back, even if I talk to analysts, if I talk to customers, if I talk to the press, are these three. One is the explosive data growth. And you are probably facing that one as well. Data keeps growing. And you can't stop it. Even if you have an attempt as an IT manager, as a CIO, if you want to stop it, 
you won't be successful. Even your internal users will go for alternative ways to find a solution to store the data if you do not offer it to them. Technologies like in the cloud, Dropbox, or anything else, they will go there and hire space if you don't provide that, uh, that services need internally. So we're really looking at that growth to continue over the next coming years. And very, very likely, you will store more data over the next two years than you did in the previous five years. So you know what to expect when it comes to data growth. The second one is the architecture that you have currently in place. I would guess, and I'm taking a little bit of a risk here, but I would guess that most of the technology that you are using and buying today comes out of the 80s. It's invented, it's been brought to market in the 80s, and it hasn't really been moved on into the new space. If you look at the 80s, that was the era that we call the client-server kind of space. That's where most of the technology come from. We have gone through the internet era, and we're now in the virtual era. So we have gone two steps further, while most of the storage technology out there is still from the 80s. So you should really assess your own organization. You know, Do I have the best infrastructure in place now to be ready for whatever is coming? And if you're thinking about cloud implementations, if your infrastructure is not ready today, don't even think about cloud implementations. It will make your life very, very hard. So you need to do a little bit of storage modernization. That brings me automatically to the last point when talking about storage modernization. If you compare what happened on the server side versus the storage side, you see a huge difference. On the server side, everything is pretty much standardized. X86 technology from Intel or AMD. Everything is pretty much standardized when it comes to virtualization. You either got VMware, Microsoft, Citrix. Everything is pretty much standardized from an ecosystem. All the partners that are out here that are providing technology for you. But compare that what's, what's happening on the storage side. There is no single virtualization out there that cover everything. There is no single or good ecosystem where you can run every storage piece in the way you would like to see it. So everybody needs to catch up on storage, what we have done on server, if you really want to go to an end-of-end -end solution that everybody wants to have. And that will be done through converged infrastructure structures that will be happening through cloud implementations, but storage really needs to step up here. And that's an obligation not only from the vendor side, but it's also an obligation from the user side. So everybody needs to work here to get to the same level where we are today on storage, uh, on server. If you don't do that, and that's what's happening today, you, you will see that your cost is out of control when it comes to storage. And I would guess that most of the cost that you currently have on storage is to keep the lights on. You don't do much on innovation when it comes to storage. You're keeping up with the speed of more data, storing it, backing up it, and whatever comes along uh, to make that happen. So what we have done within Dell is come up with a new architecture to help you and to overcome those challenges. And that's what we call the fluid data architecture. So fluid is the word within Dell that you will hear me and everybody uh, repeat constantly. Uh, for those who are maybe not a native English speaker, do you know what fluid is? Water is fluid. You know, it's really literally in the word fluid. And think about a mountain top with snow on there. When it melts, it goes down automatically through rivers, through canals, and it ends up in the sea. So nature has defined that for us, and we think the best place for water to be is ultimately at the sea. So fluid works. It automatically finds this place, and it does it typically in the most efficient way. The canals and everything that's been done and the rivers being, being made by Mother Nature to make it as efficient as possible. If you want to have the water upstream again for whatever reason, you have pumps, you have locks, you have everything to bring it back where it should be. But typically, it is fluid, and it goes that direction. What we want to do within Dell is exactly the same as with a fluid water kind of concept. We want to make data fluid. That means we want to automize, uh, uh, automate uh, the usage of data, the usage of your storage equipment, to move that data to the best place where it should be at all time. So whatever you create, whatever your systems are generating, uh, whatever your business demands are, as soon as there is a bit or a byte being stored, Dell wants to take care of that one in service of your business to store it at the right place. And that's not all. As you can see, the full line here is storing the right data in the right place at the right time at the right cost. So those four are highly important for us. And everything we currently do, all our developments, are in that space. So let's talk a little bit more in depth what right data, right place, right time, and right cost is all about just to make sure you can follow what I'm saying and what Dell is trying to achieve. When it comes to the right data, roughly 80% of your data is what we call unstructured data. Have you ever heard of unstructured data? 
for those who have never heard of it. Unstructured data is data that basically doesn't sit in a database. As soon as you got data into a database, it's structured and it's typically well managed. Either your database or your database management tools take care of it. It's not a big problem. And as you can see in this graph, structured data is also growing, but it's not growing that rapidly as unstructured data. So everything that doesn't sit in a database is unstructured data and it grows in a rapid way. And that can even cause you a big challenge. Uh, unstructured data, a couple of examples. It could be a medical image if you are in the healthcare environment. Uh, that could be video files, photo files, emails, Word documents, whatever you have. Typically, this is content or information being created by end users. It's typically not the data being generated by your systems. If you've got a CRM system or something like that, and it's updating something and gives you a lead time or whatever, uh, that sits in a, in a, in a good, well-managed system, and that's in the database, and that's okay. This is typically end-user created content. So your challenge sits in your users. Your challenge sits in your employees and everybody that's building those content. And a good example is this PowerPoint presentation. If I had to make this PowerPoint presentation a couple of years ago, so it would be a 100 kilobytes kind of presentation. Now it's easily 5 megabytes due to the pictures I put in there. And everybody will do it. And you will have a copy on it on your mobile phone, and you will have a copy on it on your tablet, and you will have a copy on your USB stick. And so it replicates almost like a virus into your organization. And you have stored all the same data, all that unstructured data, multiple times. And you can see the growth. It's really exploding. So when we talk about the right data, if we want to handle the right data, we need to understand what data sits where in your organization and to handle that correctly. When it comes to the right place, not all data is equal. Your information coming out of your CRM is probably more critical, more important than maybe a Word document that somebody created for his, you know, uh, voluntarily work that he does for your company. But on the other hand, a Word document that is a legal contract could be highly important again. So you all know and you all have, at least that's my guess, uh, different environments in your organization where you store data. You've got a production environment where your core data is. It's your most critical data. It's the, uh, the highest investment from your company that you put in there. It's available 24 by 7 and all these kind of things. Hopefully, you got something like an off-site recovery site where you make a disaster recovery solution from, where you replicate data so that you can easily get it back if something happens in case of an emergency. Uh, hopefully, due to regulations, you have spent some time and some money on archiving and you, you, know, you do what you need to do by your country laws or by your organizational rules to archive data. You might have another copy in backup, either on disk or on tape. And maybe you already have gone into the cloud a little bit to store some of your data over there. So there are multiple platforms here where you store different kinds of data. And if, I, if I'm talking to somebody, this is a natural kind of behavior. Everybody says, yeah, that kind of data, that's what I want to put on my production environment. Or that's data that I want to put on my secondary storage or whatever it is. People, people typically know what to store where. If you have an SAP environment, it even goes further. Within one application, you have a production, a test, and a development environment, and everybody could have their own storage. So similar concept, different platforms, different users, different storage users. So we know there is a right place to store data, and not all data is equal. The other one is about the right time. How do you know it's the right time to do something with your data? Now, roughly 90% of all the data is never accessed after creation. So whatever we make, whatever we do, roughly 90% is not accessed again. This is all, by the way, data provided by independent analysts and those kind of firms. This is not me making up any numbers. Um, if, if you do a uh, deep dive, what that is on the 90%, 10% is what we call active data. 10% is being used on a daily basis. Uh, that could be an address of your customer that's been retrieved for very, maybe, uh, maybe every time uh, to send something to them. Uh, that could be some shipping data that you need to do any, uh, any day of the time to see well, what's going on in your company. So that's roughly 10%. 20% is semi-active. So, you know, it's, it's frequently accessed, but not every day or something like that. The maturity, 70%, is static data. So it lives in your environment. It sits on your storage. It sits on your server, wherever it sits, and nobody cares about it. Honestly, the presentation today, the likeliness this will be stored and never accessed again is pretty high. The next time I have to give a presentation, I will probably build a new deck because I have a new audience, we've got new technologies, we've got a new message or whatever this is. 
but I need to store this one maybe for 10 years because my legal department could say, wait a minute, what have you told that audience in Frankfurt at that time? I want to know it. I need to have a copy of it. So even if I don't want to have it anymore, my company uh, makes sure I, I keep a copy of it. So then we have the discussion, what's the right cost all about? Um, for those who had economics uh, at school, uh, you probably heard of econom economies of scale. It basically means, and that's what everybody's used to, the more you use, the more you buy, the cheaper it gets. Uh, that, that's one of those laws. You know, the more there's been manufactured, typically the price is going down, cost price is going down, and all these kind of things. Uh, oh, wait a minute. They, they told me one thing extra. They said that doesn't apply to products where there is a shortage on. If you have a shortage, the more people use, the higher the price goes up. But typically, I don't think there is a shortage on storage anymore at the moment. So typically, the more we should use, the cheaper it should become. And guess what? That doesn't apply to storage today. The more terabytes, the more pendabytes, the more zettabytes you want, the more you pay for it. And it typically goes in a very linear way. And I would bet that everybody of you has a number in your head what you pay internally for your storage environment per terabyte or per gigabyte or whatever that is. And if somebody in your business asks you on the spot, how much would it cost if I need so much storage for that environment, you could roughly say, I think it will end up at 50K, 100K, based on that linearity. That linearity doesn't make any sense today because in the virtualized space, we should not work in a linear way anymore. And the right cost, and you see the, the, the red one, which is more linear way, with the explosion of data, goes through the roof. There are technologies out there that are much more on the green line. If you do true storage virtualization, you, you will have the green line in place. So what is the right cost here? The right cost is you're using more, and the economies of scale should work for you, and you should have a lower cost than you probably are paying today. And that, that technology is available uh, as well. Uh, I will come back to that in a second. So, what's the big secret here? Where is Dell after when we talk about fluid data architecture? Um, as I mentioned before, you have the right place, you have the right costs, you have the right data. So, we also know that you typically have four platforms in place. I leave cloud out of the equation for the moment because I'm not 100% sure if everybody has a cloud at the moment. But for the sake of the clarity, on the sake about clarifying where storage is, uh, is going, I have put the cloud in here as well. Um, and as I said at the beginning, within Dell, our aim is to simplify it. This is a very simplified view. I know that in reality, it's not that easy as on this slide, but the principle still flies. It, it, it is a very easy concept. So we know that everybody has servers in their organization. And there are still servers in there that store a lot of data. I think over the last 10 years, uh, we have gone to what we call storage consolidation. We basically pulled off all the storage from the server and put it into a storage area network. I'm not sure if you see it as well. The trend is going the other way again. There are some architectures out there where some software vendors say, it might be better if you put more disk in your server for whatever reason. And I, as Dell, we support that because we see the benefits of it. But it goes against what we saw before. But we see more and more servers having more and more data to handle today. So ideally, five years ago, I would not put a server on there. Now we have to put a server in there as a platform where you store data again. Then you've got your prime storage, your core storage platform. Again, that's where you probably have spent most of your time, your energy on. That's what you protect with all your life. That's your mission-critical data. Then you probably have, or hopefully have, a secondary storage, a platform where you can offload some of your data for whatever reason. Or, and then you've got your backup and archiving and your cloud. Uh, what some customers try to do, uh, willing to do, is connect all those platforms together. And this is, this is not something unique to Dell. This is what's called storage tiering. Just maybe if you're willing to show a hand. Is anybody of you doing storage tiering? None of you? Wow, that surprised me a little bit. We, we, we do have customers who are looking into it. Uh, but maybe the good reason why you haven't done it is because it's not easy. It's relatively complex. And if you want to connect all those platforms together, uh, you are facing different technologies. Giving a couple examples, I promise you it would not become a technical session. You could, might have a file-based platform on one hand and a block-based storage platform on the other hand. You might have an iSCSI protocol on one hand. You might have a fiber channel interface at the other hand. So how do you connect all those technology? 
So companies who are really looking at storage sharing, they find out it's not that easy. It's risky, it's time consuming, and it will cost you a lot of money. And still there is a good reason for doing it. And so as Dell, as we want to make the, the, the complex uh, uh, stuff uh, easier, this is where we want to help. So Dell is a big fan of Dell, of storage tiering. So to remember, if you talk about multiple platforms, and we know you need multiple platforms, well, because we, we stated already, there is a right place and not all data is equal, um, you will have multiple platforms. We want you to connect all those platforms together. So storage tiering is definitely something, as an advice from Dell, where we say, that's a wise thing to do. Not for the sake of tiering, but for the sake of putting the right data at the right place at the right time for the right costs. What you will also see is that vendors in general, and Dell as well, are putting more and more functionality on every platform they have. Uh, that's a continuous way. Uh, new technologies are coming to the market and you add them to it. Uh, snapshot technology, deduplication, replication, whatever that is. And every time you buy a new platform, there is new functionality in there or newer versions of that functionality being in there. As Dell, we, we were doing the same. Uh, I've, I've called out a couple of examples here. On the server side, uh, we will, uh, we have announced it already, it's not commercially available yet, but it will be soon, um, what we have, what we call Dell Fluid Cache. This is flash in-memory storage that sits in the server, which is ultra-fast and is providing storage to the application that have the highest performance needs. Uh, on the core platform, so your prime storage, your secondary storage, your backup, we have added file functionality to our platforms. At Dell, we believe that block-based storage is the best storage that is out there, and we're adding file functionality for those customers who want to have it. And when it comes to storage, we have a storage as a service offering uh, to help you with that one. So functionality, functionality is being added to all the platforms all the time. And that will increase the complexity if you want to do the tiering. And as I just said, we want to do tiering. So if you're adding functionality to every single platform, and different technologies, how do you ever connect those platforms together? So in the fluid data architecture, what we try to do is to get an overarching layer on top of your storage. And remember what I said in the introduction, um, server has gone through a high level of standardization with fertilization. We're trying to do the same on the storage side. Although the fluid data architecture is not a virtual layer on top of it, it has the same principle. It basically unifies all the storage based on one single technology uh, where everything becomes much more easier to move and to handle. Uh, this is a journey. Uh, we have much of those components available today, but if you look at our roadmap, uh, we have much more to offer in the future uh, to really go after that, that vision and the strategy that we have, that it shouldn't be a discussion about the platform, it shouldn't be a discussion about your prime storage, it should be about data automation to make sure that data is fluid, that it automatically moves to the right place at the right time for the right cost. So remember that picture that we had earlier, what we want to achieve is that automatically your most active data sits at your prime storage. It shouldn't be a call be made by you or an IT manager or anybody else. That data automatically should be classified as um, highly important, highly critical, and therefore needs to be at the most uh, secure, fastest array that you have in your architecture. If it becomes semi-active, it should automatically move to the place where it's much more cost efficient for you to do. You don't want to have your semi-active data on your most expensive platform. And you definitely don't want to have your static information at your most expensive platform. So what we want to do is place that data automatically to the right platform. Again, fluid, like the water, it goes in the most efficient way. Data should exactly move the same way. And that's what the fluid data architecture is all about. So then you could say, wait a minute. So this is really much a architecture-centric kind of discussion. Um, you know, I have my SAN in place. I might have a converged infrastructure. So that's all great. I get it. But, you know, I am looking, or my business is asking for through solutions as well. You know, I'm getting questions what to do with big data, what to do with data protection. Would that fall off in that architecture? And the answer is clearly no. 
everything that's out there today or will be there in the future, um, and you know, I call them out a couple of things over here, like application, big data, storage optimization, all fits under that fluid data architecture layer. So you can do whatever you want to do from a solution perspective, and Dell will offer those solutions. We're even gearing up on some of those solutions. We'll bring more of those solutions to market. But they will be positioned, and they will work under the fluid data architecture layer. So that automatically, the data generated by that system, or hosted by that system, will move to the most efficient place to store it correctly. So if you would ask, Robin, great story something I really would like to see. Maybe you have tried it before with other technologies, uh, storage tiering. So can you walk the talk here? Can you make this happen today? My answer would be yes. We can do this today. We're doing it already for, for a couple of years. It's not unique. We have systems in our portfolio that do this today. So we, we can make this work very easily for you. Uh, would I be the right person to do it? No, I'm a marketing guy. So I, need, so I need a little bit of help of my colleagues here. And as I said in the beginning as well, uh, we are a solution provider. Uh, so, so we do offer service end-to-end -to, -end, uh, to help you wherever you need. And particularly when it comes to the fluid data architecture, the most interesting part is at the beginning when it comes to, uh, to support services. Uh, and that's the consultancy area. Um, we have found out that customers say, I want to have this and I want to have it tomorrow. They don't have a clue what kind of data they have. So before we can start building that architecture, we need to understand what data is in their organization. Remember what I said earlier, the right data? We need to understand what the right data for that company is. So we typically uh, start with a consultant service where we do a storage assessment. Uh, we put an agent into the infrastructure who is analyzing all the data for a couple of days, and then we have a very good understanding. We give you that report back and then you know how your data is, is, is going within your infrastructure, what kind of data you have. And from that point, we design and optimize that infrastructure. Uh, we deploy fluid data, we manage, protect, and uh, we support it for you. So we can do this today. Systems are out there, the technology is available, and the solutions are available as well. So this is not a visionary page where we say, this will be there in five years. We will enhance it to make it better in five years, but fluid data and the concept of moving data is already available today. So, in summary, because I'm not sure if you saw it, Paul already came in with, with the signage. I only have uh, 10 minutes to go. So, in summary, just to make sure you all understand, and I'm going to repeat myself, what is fluid data all about is where we want to try to help your business to store the right information at the right place at the right time for the right cost. I don't let you repeat it collectively, but this is what Dell is all about when it comes to storage. And just to make sure that this is not a, a fairy tale kind of, uh, of conversation, um, IDC last week uh, launched a, a white paper and, and they came to the stunning conclusion, which we knew a little bit already, but it's glad that IDC is recognizing it, that we can provide a almost 400% return on investment when it comes to fluid data. And honestly, I've never seen any vendor calling out a 400% or nearly 400% return on investment when it comes to storage. And even to make it a little bit better, that because the exact number is 397%, that number is being given within six months after deployment. So, you know, I can't sign it in blood in here because we need to go through the full cycle to understand what kind of data you have and all these kind of things. But Dell is able to give you an almost 400% return on investment when it comes to storage. So, when it comes to the right cost, when it comes to saving money, Dell might be a very good partner for you to look at and to see if fluid data is something for you. Because we think we can make your business a little bit fluid as well. Now, when we talk about, uh, about, about fluid and by cost and everything, you probably have budget challenges at the moment. You probably don't have the same amount of money to spend on storage than you might have maybe 10 years ago when the sky was the limit. Um, so the savings that we are proposing here, which you get with a high return on investment, is not the cost of the cut your budgets so that you have lower budgets next year, next year. The aim for Dell is that you use those savings to invest in your infrastructure and to be more innovating than you were probably in the last couple of years. So innovation is the magic word in here. Um, and if innovation is going to converge infrastructure, we will be supportive. If that innovation is you're going into a cloud kind of situation, 
and where you want to do cloud either direct or indirect, publicly or privately, we don't care. As long as you keep innovating, you're probably doing the best for your business. So the aim is here when it comes to those return on investments or saving to help you to free up money to keep investing in what's important for your business. Because I think, you know, as a group we're sitting here together, everybody understands that um, the IT is the engine of most of the businesses out there. If you pull the plug on your infrastructure, probably your, your business is not running anymore. So, you know, your CEO, uh, your, your, your board team, whatever that is who's making the decisions on your budget should be aware of it. And Dell is contributing to help you. So with that, I am done. Exactly on time, I guess. Maybe I've got one or two minutes left. So I'm opening it up for questions, if there are any. I hope I didn't go too fast. And again, I know it was a high-level pitch. If you are interested to understand what Fluid is all about, where Fluid is working today, and see how we can do it, please visit us at the booth and we, we can educate and tell you everything about it. But let me open up for questions, if there are any. And don't be shy. I don't give a nasty answer. I will be very polite. Anybody? So let, let me quickly check. So you're not, not a shy audience, I know that. Who believes me? Who thinks Fluid can save money? I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, keep going. Seven people. Okay. So... Come to the booth. We will give you that link of that IDC white paper proving the 400% return on investment on fluid data from Dell. Thank you very much for your time. I hope you will have a great day today and tomorrow and speak to you soon. Cheers.